Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 504. Some of the things that we diagnose and treat while reviewing blood work with a particular focus on parathyroid tumors. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. So in terms of having this conversation, first thing I want to know is what is a parathyroid tumor as opposed to something with the The thyroid? thyroid. Because I don't know the distinction. So that's that's very important. (laughs) Most people don't. I mean, a lot of people talk about thyroids Uh uh, and dysfunction of the thyroid, and it's much more common than dysfunction of the parathyroid. The, The thyroid looks like a butterfly. It sits right here on your neck, right above your collarbone. Okay. And behind it are four little teeny tiny dots of tissue that are a different gland. It's actually attached to your thyroid behind it, more clo- closer like to nodules or bumps on feel, the thyroid. Yeah, like but little it's bumps, not but they're of the thyroid. They're not thyroid. They're okay. parathyroid. They're a different tissue, okay. and they do something different. Okay. So thyroid manages your metabolism, mul- many other things, uh, but the heat that you make in your body, how your hair grows. But parathyroid tumor, or excuse me, glands are very specific. They manage your your calcium. The calcium in your blood is necessary for your muscles to work, your heart to work. You need calcium to keep your blood pressure at a certain level. Calcium is a very important mineral in your body, and your parathyroid uh, glands help manage that, but they also manage the ability of your uh, bones to absorb calcium and have enough calcium in the body. So sometimes it means, oh, I need more calcium. They pull calcium out of the bones. Like if you don't have enough calcium in your diet, your parathyroid uh, glands say, oops, not enough calcium, we'll and, and we're going to go yeah. get some from your right. from your bones. Right. So that's a that's a huge deal, and it's really important for how your muscles feel, if they're in spasm or not. I mean, you get spasms if you don't have calcium. You also, how your heart works, you can have arrhythmias without it or with too much. And how your, and if your bones get fragile. So oftentimes, I mean, this is just one of the many tests that we do when people come in. And we look at this because it's so important. We don't have to test the parathyroid hormone. We just test the calcium because if the calcium is off, the calcium is high or low, then maybe there's something wrong with the parathyroid. Okay. So that's what the parathyroid does. So it's an if-then kind of thing. Right. If your calcium is low, then we'll check for the right. parathyroid. So when a new patient, if, if any of you are out there thinking, have read our books and you're thinking about maybe becoming a patient at BioBalance Health, you go online, there's a new patient packet, one for men, one for women. But as you fill that information out, there's data there that will tell you what the symptoms are, that if you have a thyroid deficiency – uh, you need to, to be aware of and, and consider getting replacements. But there also is a prescription form for a set of blood tests that are required. Mm-hmm. You have to have those tests done before you're accepted as a patient. I mean, it's one of the ways that Dr. Maupin and her staff determine, are you a good candidate for testosterone replacement? So you get those blood tests done and you send them in, and then you come in. And you have an interview and they talk to you about what are your symptoms, what are you experiencing, what are you aware of? And then they look at the blood test and compare what you're saying to them about your quality of life and quality of health to the data that they have on the blood test. And how many different blood tests do you do in 18. that? 18. 18 different, 18 different blood information tests. pieces. Thing. And, you know, we don't do this every time. We, don't, we do it at the beginning. We do it after the first insertion of pellet hormones. And then once and a year. And once a year. Yeah. So that we can keep track of you. But... But at all the time, we look at every test. We don't just go, oh, yeah, your tests are normal. Right. I mean, we look at well, every you also, test with you. You also don't use normal the way the Quest and, and uh, what the other and way? And LabCorp. And LabCorp 
call normal mm -hmm. because you have some issues with how those are determined. Right. That, so, mean, so you can't, so my, <laughs> just an aside, you can't just look at your lab and, and look down and if they, if they have something that says normal or, or in range, out of range, if everything's in range, that doesn't necessarily mean you're well. That in, in terms of parathyroid, it does, but not in terms of hormones because hormones, they, they compare you to somebody who's your age. Right. And hormones that drop with your age, that doesn't mean you're healthy and you have enough hormone. It just means you're average for the average person your age. And if you look around, you don't want to be average for the right. average person your age. <laughs> Most people in America yeah. are fat and they're and and they don't they don't look healthy. And honestly, they're not the picture of health. You don't want to be that. You want to be young, healthy, normal in a in a hormone. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we compare you to. So you can't really interpret your own blood work. So a, a lot of scientific tests and data are compared in terms of what are called age cohorts. I'm in my 70s. My results are compared against other men in their 70s. What Dr. Maupin is saying that in terms of hormone replacement, they don't look at age cohorts to see viability. We don't. You don't. Yes. Uh, Biobalance Health does. does not. The lab does. But Biobalance Health has the experience and the knowledge, which is unique to the practice, to be able to determine your hormone balance. Because a lot of times the, the hormone balance issues are predictive. If you are starting to slide one way or the other uh, low in different hormones, that's a warning sign down the road that you're going to be susceptible to certain kinds of diseases, certain kinds of problems like, like heart attacks. And if you get your hormones replaced to the viable level that you had when you were younger, you protect yourself against that slide. And that's mm -hmm. one of the primary reasons for coming to Biobalance mm -hmm. Health, to get your hormones replaced. So sometimes when that's the topic of consideration, I, I looked on the website, I heard the information, I thought, well, maybe that's right I have for symptoms me. like that. So. I have symptoms, I mm -hmm. go through the checklist. And then Dr. Maupin's office said, we well, got to get all these blood tests done, and then come in and make an appointment, which I did. And then they sit down and they look at it. And sometimes when they do, either she or Dr. Sullivan, the other doctor in the practice, look at those test results and look and, and listen to you. And they say, well, okay, so some of these things on the checklist for testosterone replacement or estrogen replacement are right in the zone. That might be a thing for us to consider. But there may be some other things going on here that our test results are showing that no one else has apparently caught in any mm -hmm. yearly exam or, or checkup, well, well woman exam that you've done. Let's look into this a little further. Is, is that yeah, what? Yeah, that's, that's right. And, and when we go down the lab, lab with you, mm -hmm. we go down with all the normals and say, like, your lipids are normal. And your, you know, and your cholesterol is normal. Your triglycerides are normal. That's what this means. Your, your sugar is high. So we're going to look at your hemoglobin A1C to see if your sugar is high on an average for three months. And if it is, then we're going to do something about it. So we look at other things, but some things aren't just common. So there are some things like I do a prolactin level. A prolactin level is it's the first hormone. This is not what we're talking about generally today. But for example, I do a prolactin level on both men and women. And it's the first hormone that will increase if you have a pituitary tumor. And the pituitary is right here and it manages all your hormones. So you could have a pituitary tumor, and it's causing you to have low thyroid, low testosterone, low estrogen, menopause, even before you're really menopausal. So, so basically, I look for that prolactin, and often, maybe once every two months, I find a pituitary tumor, which is a completely different thing than what I'm meaning to treat, and it's something outside my realm. I mean, I can't treat a pituitary tumor without the help of an endocrinologist. So I then send that patient, they may or may not still need hormones, but I send that patient to an endocrinologist right. who then might send that patient to a surgeon to get it, get the pituitary tumor removed or to get medicine. So you don't approach hormone replacement as a panacea, one size fits all, this is all you're ever gonna need. You no. say it helps specific things for specific causes. Mm -hmm. And if I see something outside the range, then I make an appropriate referral to mm -hmm. somebody that specializes in whatever this thing might be. Right. If I don't, if I can't take care of it yeah. and it's not in the range of, of uh, it's not in thyroid, plain thyroid, it's not in um, pre-diabetes pre or diabetes, it's not in 
uh, pre-heart disease with high lipids. It, there are certain things that go along with these hormones that we treat mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. But if it's something we're still looking for, as they called it in medical school, zebras, because in the U.S., there's horses, and you rarely see a zebra, but I'm right. still looking for zebras because no one else seems to be looking for them, or they don't have time, or they and don't do the right And there are zebras in the herd. Yes, and there are zebras. Yeah. And so when you find them, they need to be taken care of. So you were talking about calcium, and, yes. and one of the things that you've told me is that when women go through menopause, their calcium numbers typically change. Mm -hmm. Can you say more about what that is? It go up or so down? Or? Usually, they start absorbing more of the bone from their bones. Their bones thin because the parathyroid says you don't have enough calcium, and they they pull it from the bones. It's secondary. It's because the estrogen is not making the parathyroid hormone uh, put calcium back into the bone. Okay, it's absor It is removing more of the calcium than it is putting in. Okay, so the balance is off. So just menopause can raise the calcium level just a little bit, but that it, it usually is not um, is not in the range of what a parathyroid tumor would do. So kidney stones are related to the calcium issues. Mm -hmm. Which way does that work? If you have too much calcium in your body, then you develop kidney stones because your your kidneys are trying to pee it all out. Mm -hmm. Or if you have too little calcium, they develop. How it's does, too much. Too much. So so just kind of think of this as. Your bones are pulling it out. It goes into your blood, and nothing is. And, and your body is saying, "I got to get it out of my blood, or, or my muscles will go into tetany." So, and the heart won't work. Mus muscles are going to what? Tetany, like it'll just, the muscles. Your muscles will just be like one big cramp. It won't be able to relax. Okay. So, so basically, that calcium that comes out of the bones has to go somewhere. So it goes out through your through your urine usually. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go through the intestines. So in general. So it's going through your urine. So all of a sudden you're loading your urine with this mineral and the minerals start the calcium starts coming together in little stones. Mm -hmm. So then we see an increased risk of of calcium kidney stones. So when I when I have somebody who comes in and says they had kidney stones and then they say they're menopausal and then they and then they we go through this conversation i always ask them when their kidney stone started when did that start right did it start when you were menopausal or did it start before that you know there are other kinds of kidney stones uric acid stones from people who have gout uh or just have high uric acid levels uh genetically but this is a kidney stone you can see it on x-ray so it's when the only did, kind you can see the calcium, calcium ones are the only ones see. that show up on x-ray right you uric can acid see. ones don't show up yeah on they're okay. clear but they can, you can see the backup of the urine, but you can't see the stone. Right. So, uh, so these are, these so are things I think Franklin. about. Benjamin Franklin in his latter years had kidney stones that were extremely painful. Mm -hmm. And he figured out that if he stood on his head to urinate, the stones would fall away and he would be able to generate a stream of urine. And you are a wealth of knowledge. Stood back up, they'd fall back on the. Okay. So what that meant. Yeah. Was. That they had gotten into his bladder, I think, and they had blocked the outflow of the bladder into the penis, you know, into. The well, urethra. it could have been a gallbladder stone. I mean, no. it was just some kind of stone. No, these are these are ki these are these kidney, are kidney stones. stones. So the kidney stones go down, you know, from your kidney all the way down this little tube, this little tube, to your bladder. Uh -huh. So then they get they can get stuck there. They can start growing and not be able to get out the urethra. Yeah. So the urethra is downstream from the bladder. So if those stones fall on top of that outflow track, right. by gravity, you can't pee. Yeah. So if you stand on your head, that makes sense. They'll, they, they will go more toward your head and yeah. open up that path, passageway because yeah. they're heavier than urine. They're going right. to go Follow toward gradu yeah. gravity. Right. Heads down. They're, ben the, Franklin figured that out. That's, that's a yeah. wealth of knowledge. I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I, Odd little they don't I teach me that in yeah. medical school. They don't say, oh, yeah, and the famous person did yeah. this. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's so. So what we see, you know, so oftentimes patients will come in with a high calcium level. And what I think of, I say, you know, your calcium level is high. You don't have any estrogen, if it's female, if she's female, you don't have any estrogen. You don't have any testosterone. So your bones are dissolving more than they are being made. So you have extra calcium. So I'm going to treat that. I'm going to give you back your testosterone. I'm going to give you back your estrogen. If they have some other issues like high blood sugar, do you give them I'm going calcium? To treat that. No, they're high calcium. They're high calcium. They're, so I want them to take it out of their, their body is going to take it out of their 
blood and put it into their bone. Okay. So that will make them have less to make stones, less in their blood, make them more normal. And normal, in, in general, that works. It's not a parathyroid problem. The parathyroids respond normally. However, if they have a parathyroid problem, the next time I check the calcium, it's just as high. So they can have a parathyroid tumor. Right. And if they have the tumors, the best thing to do is take the tumors out. Generally, or they can radiate them or they can remove them. And usually they remove part of the thyroid with it. Like if they're both on the same side, they can remove it. But if, if you have that done, then what does that function in your body? I mean... That's true. That's a huge deal. You have to, you have, I don't know how to manage that if there was no parathyroid. Okay. They try to maintain some, one of the glands that's not uh, precancerous or cancer, cancerous. I've never really met somebody that had all of their parathyroids out. They well, usually you, have, these, these uh, tumors are usually benign, not always, but usually benign, and they usually just remove the ones that are affected and leave the ones that are normal. But in the in the notes that you gave me mm-hmm, to prepare for this mm-hmm. conversation, you said something about putting one of them in your forearm. Yeah. So if the whole thyroid has to come out, say you had a disease of the thyroid or you had thyroid cancer, okay, and it affected the parathyroids, and they they got one of the uh, parathyroids out. They I had a patient that had this. She actually had her that parathyroid implanted into her forearm so they could watch it to make sure it didn't like become cancerous, and so it would work from there. So it would I, still do a, its job, even it though the still thyroid did its job. that normally was attached, it was gone. Right. And it, it, even though it was in a different part of the body, uh-huh. it was amazing. And wow. so I always checked it every year when I was, I was, that was when I was a gynecologist. And I checked it every year just to feel, make sure it was the same size. I, you know, she had, wasn't going to the surgeon anymore and she saw it's her what internist. what they used to do with digital exams for prostate. Yeah, well. Just check it every year to see if it was the same there's size. There's a lot of palpation that that at this time with this coronavirus thing yeah. is an issue. <laughs> Palpation of, for medicine is really important. I mean, generally, if I see somebody with like a, a thyroid and I'm looking at it across the yeah. table and I'm like, can I come over and feel your thyroid to see what it feels like? Because that tells me a lot. Yeah, The thyroid can, can feel like really soft and mushy or it can feel hard in one area or you can feel nodes or uh, little... Um, little hard round spots, you know, that, and those have to be attended to. You have to look at them with radiology then. But we do breast exams by palpating. Yeah. We do abdominal exams looking for, looking for gallstones, big liver, um, abdominal masses, pregnancy, yeah. you know, and, and we do prostate exams. And one of the part of the GYN exam, which you wouldn't be familiar with, is that we put two fingers in the vagina, one hand on the abdomen, and we push the uterus between the, the two hands so that we can feel the size and the contour of it. Okay. That only that works in people of normal size. If they're really obese, you have to almost just hold the stomach bound, down and use two hands from the inside to feel it. You can feel ovaries as well. Wow. And that's why... But you have to know what you're feeling. I mean, you're not seeing it. You know where you're feeling. Right. And you know from the texture or the density or the... Well, it's everything. It's it's how big is it? What does it feel like? Is it, is it normal... You know what normal is. Is it a normal texture? Like um, ovaries are kind of, they're, they're firm, but you can kind of indent them. You could feel that. You can feel if there's a cyst there because you go up and you, you want to feel something this big and it's that big. So you know there's a cyst there. I remember taking my youngest child to the Magic House here in St. Louis, uh-huh. and they had this display of, of texture-based things Mm-hmm. where you put your hand in a box and you feel something, you yeah. try to figure out what is it from the feel of it. You couldn't see it, and they didn't tell you. I mean, yeah. and, but you learn as a physician, you learn to do that about what feels normal for density or texture of different right. body tissues and body uh-huh. parts. Wow. But I practiced when I was little. I used to, I used to take the whole garage and make a, a, a spook show or a scary show, uh-huh. and I used to do that, put boxes. You had a little hole that you couldn't you couldn't see and you put your hand in and you have to feel it and and it was usually like witch's brains or you know things like to, that uh witch's eyes you know peeled yeah. grapes I, I used to do that with uh when i was teaching anthropology in high school mm-hmm. uh have them bring uh items from home random items from mm-hmm. home and put them in the box and have somebody you know have a drape over it and they have mm-hmm. to come and feel it and then try to guess what it was and what it was used for because uh, we were we were talking That's pretty cool. Well we were talking about how important it is to develop the ability to describe things. 
without oh, yeah. to, to give an actual description and not an interpretive description where you're guessing what it is. Right. And Hard, you, cold, round, so, soft, so green. So one student know. would come up and, and uh, feel square. the item mm-hmm. and give the descriptors, and the class would try to figure out what they were holding, oh. and, and then we would talk about if, if that's what it is, what would it be used for? Okay. Because anthropologists do that when they go back in time and find things in a grave uh-huh. to say, well, what was this and what was right. it used for? You know? uh-huh. So, and they feel it, look at it, see yeah. what the, you know, see if it's cool or you know. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really even think about that. Experiment. I've always thought of it more related to medicine because we don't always have an X-ray and ultrasound. I mean, right. you know, you always have to think, what would I do on a desert island with nothing? You know, and so most of it is visually looking at somebody, looking like at fingernails. <laughs> no, it is. It, it yeah. is. <laughs> Yeah. It is. I mean, you would have to figure out what you would need. Like they used to say, what's your most important thing to um, to deliver a baby? Or what what forceps would you take with you to a desert island? I mean, they yeah. don't use forceps anymore, so yeah. uh, or not very much. But that, that kind of thing was always asked. You have to think like that. What would I do right. if I had nothing? Well, it's training you to think critically and, and mm-hmm. in terms of problem solving. With that in mind, there's there are a list behind us of mm-hmm. uh, symptoms of hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, mm-hmm. that you consider after you get a blood test or before. I mean, you, you talk. Well, these to are so, if I if I think that they have if they have a high calcium, they've had kidney stones and or or uh, I've given them hormones and their calcium didn't go down. Then I, I, I've already looked to see if they have fatigue. So what happens is all of a sudden, you know, they, fatigue goes along with this. I give them pellets and they're supposed to be, have better energy. And they're supposed to have all these different things that are due to testosterone. And their testosterone level is good. And so I make sure of that. Then I look, I say, well, what else could be causing this? And so that's one of the things. If the calcium's high, it could be a parathyroid tumor. So one of the most important phrases in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association, when you're trying to figure out a code to say, well, here's a diagnosis diagnosis of what this person is suffering from, is rule out. Because so many of the symptoms overlap. (laughs) They don't have a rule out. They don't have one in in medicine? In our codes, there's no rule out. You have to actually guess. (laughs) Wow. So, So there's a list of things that could represent low testosterone, but could also represent hyperparathyroidism and you, right. you've talked about a couple, low energy mm-hmm. feeling tired loss of appetite muscle weakness bone or joint pain and mm-hmm. it's, it's just like an ache in the in a bone somewhere it's more like deep pain in a bone not necessarily in the joint unless uh-huh. the bone but it's where the bones are dissolving okay you know so it's it's using up the calcium there and it hurts so constipation anxiety or depression constipation because the calcium, calcium too it, much calcium Okay. It sh- shuts down the, the um, peristalsis. Okay. Anxiety or depression, kidney stones, bone loss, broken bones, easily, readily broken bones. Mm-hmm. Like, like osteoporosis. Okay. You know, that, that, basically yeah. what you get from osteoporosis. And hypertension, how is that connected? Hypertension has to do with the calcium uh, going to the kidneys and actually collecting in the kidneys and damaging the kidneys. So we have calcium channel blockers mm-hmm. as antihypertensives. Okay. So we're blocking calcium that's in your blood at the receptor site. So this is the opposite of that. It's giving you too much calcium at the receptor site and increasing your blood pressure. Okay. So it's I can't give you a better description. I probably should be able to, but I can't. <laughs> and then the information that you provided is in addition to the blood test mm-hmm. and the conversation about symptoms. Because you do a parathyroid hormone test and an ionized calcium test together. And then if they're both elevated, you go... Yeah. You need to see the endocrinologist. And then they will do a, a CT scan of the neck, an MRI scan, an ultrasound, bone density test, and x-rays of the kidneys. Mm-hmm. And if they find mm-hmm. parathyroid tumors, then mm-hmm. the, you're going to have to have radiation or surgery. Right. So it's a pretty serious thing. Yes. And you and catch it's not it common. when you're not looking for it. I mean, you, you, you look for it because you've learned to, mm-hmm. but people are coming in not because they're having that identified issue. They're right. coming in because they're having the identified issue of low hormone balances, right. which you normally regulate and treat mm-hmm. for. But sometimes in the process of that normal procedure, you discover this is hiding in the weeds. And part of it is that they don't get as much better as they should. Right. Like, So I don't just jump on it right away unless, I mean, if the calcium was really high, I would, because that would be just life-threatening. But I jump on it after I've treated 
the the symptoms that could be from testosterone or estrogen. Right. And then when they're not better, what's left? You yeah. have to you go. Why are they not better? So you have to look at everything else, and yeah. that's one of the things I look at. And I've had I've had one, and Dr. Sullivan's had one this year. I mean, yeah. That's so, about how common they are because we see a lot of people. Yeah. But that's something that maybe if you you know go to a doctor who's just kind of like going through your lab and goes, oh yeah, it's a high. You know, they're not really thinking why it's high. They're assuming it's because you're in menopause or something. But but they're not going to rule it out. Um, menopause, they're just going to go, oh, it's menopause. So sometimes right. you have to actually look at what could be causing that besides menopause. All right. Well, hopefully this is useful information for you. And if you have any of these issues, discuss them with your physician. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.